This is 13-year-old Malachi Hemphill. In 2017, he went on Instagram Live to amuse his friends with a gun trick, but it ended in tragedy. When I heard he died, I cried for three hours straight. What was Malachi doing with a gun at home? Did someone in his family buy him a gun? And just how dangerous is it to have guns around you as a teenager? We'll explore all these questions and many more in today's video. But before we go on guys, I must warn you, this video contains graphic details and discussions of suicide. Malachi Hemphill was born around 2003 and 2004. This only goes to show you how young he was at the time of this horrific accident. Malachi was a happy-go-lucky boy with a million passions. You know, it was so much things that he knew how to do that he was good at so well. He didn't know what he wanted to do. But much like any teen today, Malachi was also pretty obsessed with social media. Some teens use social media to get thousands of followers and feel like the ultimate influencer. But Malachi was all about his friends. For him, Snapchat and Instagram were just ways to stay in touch with his besties and entertain them online when they couldn't be physically together. And his family had a pretty big say in it too. Malachi grew up with two loving parents, Shaniqua and Ernest, and an older sister. They cared about him more than anything in the world, and they wanted him to be safe. This also meant monitoring his social media. As you probably know, there are a lot of dangers online these days, like predators and bullying. So Malachi's parents spent a fair amount of time talking to him about his online friends and looking through his accounts to make sure he wasn't talking to creepy strangers and the like. They never expected the danger to be inside their home. On Monday, April 10th, 2017, Malachi's mom, Shaniqua, heard a scary noise coming from her son's room. I heard a big boom. I couldn't tell if it was a gunshot or what. I just knew that it was something that, that was wrong. Her daughter was also startled by the noise. So the two quickly ran upstairs to Malachi's room. To their shock, his door was locked, but he never locked his door. Shaniqua yelled at Malachi to open the door ASAP, but he was unresponsive. It wasn't like him to ignore his mom, so Shaniqua knew she had to act fast. We kicked in the door. We found him just laying there in a the pool of blood. Uh, my daughter screamed and said, Mom, um, turn his phone off. And as I proceeded to look at his phone, he was on Instagram Live. Yeah. Imagine seeing your son like this, then learning that dozens of others saw him take his life. First, there was the shock for the family. Why would Malachi take his life? And why do it in front of a live audience? Had it all been an accident? Also, who had given him the gun? Indeed, the Hemp Hills didn't own any guns. In many cases where kids shoot other kids or themselves, their families are gun enthusiasts, proudly displaying their guns in their homes and sometimes even taking their children to shooting ranges. This wasn't the case for Malachi. He'd grown up in a home where peace and love were glorified, not violence. To his family, it didn't even make sense that Malachi would want to fool around with a gun in front of his friends. He'd never spoken about guns. Shaniqua was on the phone with the emergency services when she heard a lot of noise coming from outside her home. When she looked outside her window, she saw around 50 kids in her yard, all desperate to hear Malachi was okay. I guess these were the kids that were watching it on live that live in the area. All these children watched as the paramedics arrived and rushed Malachi into the ambulance. But within a few hours, he was pronounced dead at the hospital. He'd shot himself in the head. His death was sudden and shocking to a lot of people. You don't even get to grieve until you can come to terms with what really happened. Nobody expects their son to accidentally shoot herself. To find your 13 year old son on the floor with a gun said. That's something that you just never forget. Malachi's family was not the only one who was shocked. The whole community was in disbelief. When I heard he died, I cried for three hours straight. He was everything. He was cool, chill, calm, all that. You see your friend with a gun, tell a parent, because this is a situation that didn't have to go this far. Exactly. Now Shaniqua's main concern was who gave Malachi the gun? 
So she spoke to the police and they began an investigation. It didn't take long. Talking to Malachi's friends and schoolmates, they soon discovered one of his teen friends had given him a gun and convinced him to shoot a live video with it. Police have arrested a juvenile who they claim gave Malachi the weapon and charged him with numerous crimes. The person's name has not been released because they're a minor. With the culprit arrested, the Hemphill family could get a little bit of closure. But these are murky waters. It's not like the boy shot Malachi on purpose. And just how much control can a parent have over their kid's social life? So Malachi's family appeared on TV, trying to help other families prevent such tragedies. In his bedroom playing with a gun on Instagram Live. Oh, that's what he was doing, trying to show it off. You, look, I got this gun. Malachi's godmother also assured everyone Malachi did not take his own life on purpose. He did not kill himself. He loved life. He was just playing with a gun, and the gun went off. Yep, according to police reports, Malachi was attempting to put a clip in the gun when it accidentally went off right into his head. Shaniqua and Ernest also urged parents to be more careful who their children stay in contact with. Monitor their phones, uh, mon just monitor your children more now than anything. Forest Park Police Major Chris Matson underlined this at a press conference. This is a different era. This information age where kids have access to the internet and social media sites like they never have before. We want to make sure that message is reiterated to parents. It can happen to the, to the, to the, to the best parents that's best to their kids, to the best of, to their ability. It can happen to the best people, the best ones that love their kids. Sadly, it's true. You can do your best to keep your child safe and happy, but you can't control the influence others have on them. On April 15th, Malachi made headlines again after NBA legend Shaquille O'Neal offered to pay for his funeral. He found out that Malachi's family couldn't afford to pay for a proper funeral. So five days after Malachi's death, Shaquille visited the Hemp Hills. Malachi's godmother, Shantiria, said, we just broke down and started crying because Malachi didn't have any insurance. We weren't prepared to bury him this young. We didn't have any insurance for him. So to have that from Shaquille O'Neal, it was a blessing and very touching. And we appreciate everything he does for the community. Shaquille responded, no mother should have to go through this. I can only imagine the pain that she and all of Malachi's family must be feeling. I just wanted to do what I could to help them at such a terrible time. Nearly 200 people walked the streets for Malachi. The friends, relatives, and neighbors held a candlelit vigil held in his memory three days after his death. Babs Middle School, where Malachi Hemphill was a seventh grader, even brought in counselors to help grieving children. And they were right in doing so. Watching your friend himself in the head on camera surely leaves a dark stain forever. But now, all everyone could do was move forward. And Malachi's grandma, Helen, made it very clear what the focus should be. He knows better than that. It's too easy to get a gun. You have the law that says that if you turn 18 and you have a good record, you can go and get a gun. You make it easy for them. Exactly. Why did a 13-year-old have a gun to give Malachi in the first place? And there was another worrying aspect. Why didn't any of the kids watching Malachi's live video intervene sooner? Why didn't they tell an adult about it? Shaniqua spoke to NBC about this. When you see someone on a live video playing with a gun, don't Take it for granted if that's your friend. You tell somebody, do something about it, because this could have been prevented. Maybe that's the saddest part, that it could have easily been prevented. Here's another sad twist. Malachi is not alone. Just a quick scroll through similar news shows a long list of children accidentally shooting themselves or others while playing with guns. An Arizona outdoor gun range, end of summer, family time together. Oh, we have to keep that held in. A nine-year-old girl learning how to shoot an automatic Uzi by an instructor. All right, go ahead and give me one s All right. All right, full auto. Those fateful last words. All right, full auto. This little girl killed her instructor that day. The girl simply wasn't strong enough to resist the gun's recoil. Why? And when she pulls the trigger, he loses the grip on the bottom of the magazine and gets muzzle rise and winds up getting What's it like when the shits come out? Describe it. It's gonna be like a buzzsaw going off in your hand. Yeah, maybe that's not the ideal family weekend activity for a nine-year-old. However, the 
range allowed any kids over the age of eight to shoot a machine gun. In 2008, a nine-year-old boy shot himself during a very similar scenario, also with an Uzi machine gun. His dad was there filming it, and as a result of this, his home state of Connecticut made it illegal for anyone under the age of 16 to be sold a machine gun. Some argue the laws should be even stricter. The Uzi was designed by Israeli military industries for the IDF, Israeli Defense Forces. It's a warfare machine, not a toy. And even regular pistol guns, like the one Malachi played with, can be just as deadly. In New Jersey in 2013, Anthony Senator's four-year-old son shot and killed his six-year-old neighbor while playing with his dad's gun. Eventually, his dad was sentenced to three years in prison as he took responsibility for the child's death. The prosecutor painted a grim picture. These guns were lying around the house in close proximity to ammunition, 100% preventable. Yeah, do not leave guns lying around when you have kids in the house. Don't leave them lying around anyway, but even more so with your young children around. Accidentally killing someone leaves a terrible mark on the victim's family and on you. In 2017, the same year Malachi took his own life, 17-year-old Marsavius Frazier was playing a game with his friend, Daquarion, when he accidentally shot his gun and killed him. They weren't fighting, they were best buddies. Marsuvius was so devastated, he took his own life with the same gun. The young man who was an eyewitness was best friends with um, the first person who was and as I understand, this person um, died in his arms and then he witnessed the other gentleman take his own life. Imagine witnessing your two best friends go like this. The police statement following said, this is a very unfortunate incident and we remind people to be mindful and serious about the proper and legal handling of firearms. The firearm in this incident was not stolen, but it was also not properly registered. In short, guys, don't play with guns. They're not that fun. There are so many other ways to keep your friends entertained on social media, and they're not deadly. Keep yourself safe, keep your friends safe, and if you have kids, make sure you do your best to keep them away from guns. It's just not worth it. Malachi's tragic death and all others happening every year should stand as reminders for just that. Thanks for watching, you guys. What are your thoughts on this case? And do you think guns should be kept away from teenagers? What other solutions are there? Let me know in a thoughtful comment. And before you go, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that bell button so you never miss another episode. See you next time and keep yourselves safe.